Hello, my name's Mark and I am GK Tutor, and I'm here today with Practical Machinist to talk about how we machine an internal screw thread with G-Code. So let's jump straight into it. So I start off all my programs and parts of programs by using an operator's note. So this tells us exactly what's going on. So we know it's an internal thread program. Now this is not a full program, it's just pseudocode to show you what each part of the program does during an internal screw cutting. So here's our first line. So this is where I'm gonna approach our part of our screw thread. I'm gonna approach the beginning. And we're using a rapid code here, G00. Now our X and Z dimensions is a start position. We need the Z a little bit of clearance. I normally allow five millimeters or so from the front face face of the material. So this way, if there's any backlash in the machine, there shouldn't be because we'll be using recurring ball lead screws. But if there is any backlash, by having a five mil run into the thread, it would eliminate any backlash there. And our X dimension needs to be slightly below or the same as our thread diameter. MO8 puts on the coolants. I like to put on the coolants at this point so I can see inside the machine up until the start of the cut. So once the tool is in this position, the coolant's gonna start up and then we're not gonna be able to see inside the machine anymore, but that's okay because we're cutting inside internal anyway. So this brings us to our first line of our G76. Now G76 is our screw cutting cycle. So G76 we need to list so the machine knows that we're talking about screw cutting and all the following information is to do with that. So after our G76, we've got a P value. Now the P value contains three lots of information and it's often confusing to some people. So let's put some numbers in here to make it a little bit easier to work out what all this does. So the P04 here, this means that we're having four spring passes. We're gonna to machine to size and then we're going to keep machining at that size without changing the X diameter um, for four times. So we've got some four spring passes to clean up that thread. Because often threads can be a little bit of chatter, maybe a bad finish, and this will help solve that. The second two digits of this P code here is our chamfer. Now this is the lead out chamfer. So we would put um, any angle we wish our lead out chamfer to be right here. And then the final two digits is our angle of thread. Now we're cutting metric, so 60 degrees. And if we're using imperial, usually it's 55 degrees. So depending on the type of thread you're using, depends on which angle you pop into the end of the P word. So the P word contains three lots of information. and uh, yeah, that often catches people out. So the next word I want to look at here is the Q word. So the Q word is our minimum cut. Now this is in microns. So instead of putting 0.1, we would put 100 here. So, um, so Q value is our minimum cut. So as the machine starts to take deep cuts, when it starts to cut the threads, when it's not removing much material, by the time it's coming to the end of cutting the thread, it's removing a lot more. We've got that surface area on all those teeth that's cutting around the tool there. So it's a good idea, it's good practice to reduce the size of the cut as the deeper we go. So that's what this Q value is. The machine won't cut below this, what we state here. So this is the smallest the cut the machine will take. With our value, this is our finishing allowance. So this is how much we're gonna leave on for finishing. Now this is not in microns or thousandths of an inch. Um, so we would put 0.1 here for 0.1 of a millimeter. So our second line of G code, again, we start with G76. So again, we're telling the machine, we still got some more information here. Now this is the standard two line FANUC version of G code for type A and type B, by the way. Um, this is what, Modern machines tend to use these days, but you might find a single line version also. And if you want more information on how to do that, pop over to my website. I have an article in my article section. Okay, so the G76 on the second line is active, so the machine knows that we're talking about screw thread still. So we first thing we come to here is our X dimension. Now this time it's our thread core diameter size. So whatever our thread core diameter is, we pop that in there. Our Z is the length of the thread. Now, if this is a blind hole that um, I've diagrammed on the left here, um, 20 millimeters would be the full depth of the thread, but we don't wanna smash into that back wall there, so we might want to allow off 0.1 or something for that. But Z 
is a minus number and it would be the length of our thread. And now we come to our second p-value. Now, words such as p's and q, they tend to be used for multiple uses across um, different parts of the program. So it might not always mean the same thing. So the p we used in the first line here designated those spring passes, chamfer, and angle of thread. But the second p is our depth of thread. So this is also in microns. So to move 0.1 of a millimeter, we would say 100, or to move a millimeter, it would be a thousand. So bear that in mind when we're putting in the depth of the thread, it has to be in microns. So the second Q value here is the depth of the first cut. Now, our first Q value was the depth of the final cut. So what the machine will do is it'll take the depth of the first cut and it'll slowly minimize that until it reaches the depth of the final cut. And it'll do that as it's cut in each pass. So this is also in microns. So if our final depth would be 0.1 of a millimeter, we would put 100 here. And finally, we have our F value. Now, usually F is our feed rate, but when we're cutting screw threads, it's the pitch of the thread. So if we're cutting an M16 fine thread, for example, we would need a feed rate of 1.5 here. So this is the pitch of the thread and not the feed rate, even though it's designated with F. So if you want to know more about internal screw cutting, I've got some articles over on my website at chicotutor.com and also lots of courses that teach you this in more depth. And if you want to follow me on social media, I recommend my Instagram account and that's also found at chicotutor.com.